Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from your infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, <clears throat> who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Francis with you on this 29th um, Sunday in Ordinary Time. So I'm trying something a little bit different. Uh, maybe you can uh, tell. I'm doing a walk and talk video, finally, with the new uh, DJI uh, Mini Pro 3 uh, gimbal, or drone, I should say. And <clears throat> so I'm uh, just uh, taking this for a little test spin to see how it all works. So um, today, uh, I read that second reading because it talks about the importance of sacred scripture. Very, very important concept. And I think I played last week uh, a video by uh, James Martin where he talked about how sacred scripture is very problematic for those in the LGBT uh, movement, the LB LGBT lifestyle. So I'll go ahead and play that video one more time. For many LGBTQ people, the Bible can be a very scary thing. And it's not surprising with its condemnations of homosexuality. So as you can see, um, what is happening uh, in the church today is kind of alarming, distressing, concerning. Uh, we have people who, for whatever reason, feel that they need to either one, uh, change scripture, change the, the, uh, the fundamental teachings of scripture in the church, or they need to uh, ignore those teachings from scripture. And yet, the second reading is very clear, is this is how we form ourselves uh, in righteousness. If we're going to form ourselves into righteousness, we have to uh, listen to the authoritative word of God. <clears throat> and that's uh, why we, uh, we have such a fundamental foundation in the sacred scriptures. Um, the, uh, the Catholic Church is based upon the, uh, we call it the three stool, three leg stool of sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and the sacred magisterium. And those things are uh, very fundamental to understanding uh, our faith. Are we still tracking? Okay, looks like we're still tracking. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> the gospel today talks to us about the necessity to, you know, pray without ceasing. And you might wonder, well, how do, how does the second reading really uh, tie in with uh, the the gospel? Well, because I think. For, for the way I see this homily being played out is that as people are watching what the Flemish Belgian bishops are doing, 
they have uh, basically come down now with a new uh, quote unquote uh, liturgy uh, to bless same sex unions. Again, they are bypassing scripture. They're uh, basically uh, ignoring Holy Scripture. They're trying to change the church's 2,000 year consistent teaching uh, on what it means to be authentically married. And the, the thing is that you cannot bless uh, sinful things. Um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times people, when they come to me as a priest and they say, Father, can you bless, you know, let's see if I can move this over here a little bit. Okay. They'll say, can you bless uh, my car? Can you bless my pet? Can you bless, um, you know, my house? And, and yes, the answer to all those things is yes. But if somebody came to me and said, hey, Father, can you bless my crack pipe? Uh, can you bless my uh, heroin needles? Uh, can you bless my, uh, Ill, uh, my adulterous relationship with my mistress? Um, you know, or can you bless my uh, same-sex union? Well, the answer to all those is, of course, no. And unfortunately, too many people today do not know that that's wrong. Why? Because they don't know what the scriptures teach, especially in light of our Catholic faith and our Catholic teachings and uh, the magisterium. That's why uh, the magisterium is so important for us to understand because it's the magisterium that basically uh, interprets uh, Holy Scripture for us. It interprets our traditions in light of Scripture, in light of, you know, like the teaching of the saints. And, um, and so that's why it's so important that we have good catechesis. Um, a lot of people just don't, this, these, this, in this day and age, they honestly don't know what the scriptures teach and they don't know what the Catholic Church teaches and why. See, that's the important thing, isn't just so much um, that you know what the church teaches, but why? Why does the church teach this? Well, and basically, um, the reason, and a lot of people don't want to hear this reason, is because same-sex unions go contrary to the natural law. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it just basically means that uh, two men or two women cannot bring forth new life. And, and that really is uh, what marriage, I think, is all about. It's about creating a real family. And we do not see the possibility of people who are in same-sex unions, who, who are capable of bringing forth uh, life. And so uh, this is why uh, it's so important for us to, to know what the church teaches. Now, again, with what's going on in Belgium, what's going on in Germany, uh, what's going on even, probably even throughout the Catholic world with this synod on synodality, a lot of people think that, well, if we basically um, uh, decide that we want to uh, vote against the, <coughs> excuse me, we want to basically have a referendum on what the church teaches and we decide we want to vote out certain teachings, then we can do that. Well, uh, dear friends, that is, and that's an impossibility. Um, you don't get a chance to vote on divine revelation. Uh, God has revealed certain things and they are absolutes. Uh, again, that, that's one of the things that the world today struggles with is absolutes. We don't like uh, absolutes, uh, unfortunately, in our world today. Uh, we want things that are malleable. We can change them according to our own whims. And, you know, we're kind of the final arbiters of what we think is right and wrong. And so today, as we, you know, look at, um, let's see, can I bring this down just a little bit? Okay, that might be a little bit better. 
Uh, so as we look at the teachings of the faith in light of the secular world, we see the world clamoring for change and they would like to see um, the church change. But as a result of all this, it creates a lot of, I think, uh, people, it helps, it, it hurts people and it makes them upset. They're, they're worried about what the church, uh, what's happening in the church. And they wonder if uh, the faith that they received as children, the faith that they're trying to teach to their grandchildren, is that faith still going to be here tomorrow? Well, the simple answer is yes, it is. Unfortunately, it might mean that <clears throat> certain uh, people in the hierarchy may abandon that faith. I hope not, but it, it, it appears that that may be the case. So what we're trying to do uh, is, you know, impl please uh, implore God, implore God to, you know, hear our prayers for the church. You know, dear Lord, you know, we pray that you will keep uh, your holy Catholic church uh, from the deceptions of error and heresy and apostasy and schism. And so that is the, the prayer that we are striving to, uh, you know, implore the Lord that he would watch over uh, his church always and uh, protect it from error and apostasy. So today, uh, as we come to this, uh, the readings today on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we recognize that, you know, God has given us this great foundation of faith and uh, it's meant to be for our edification. For, let's see, is that gonna go down or up? <laughs> I guess it's gonna go up. I need to make it go down. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be for our edification and for our instruction uh, in and equipping us for righteousness and holiness. And as long as we uh, prayerfully uh, maintain our trust and our belief in the rightness of the Holy Scriptures um, and, and cling to them, uh, hide them in our heart, then God, I think, will certainly honor uh, our uh, desire to follow Him. Let's see if I can get this to work without crashing into that tree over there. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's kind of one of those things that you, you try to play around with something new and exciting. So I hope you've got something out of that today. May God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.